A team of scientists at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, is trying to unravel some of the brain's biggest mysteries with artificial intelligence. CGTN's Francis Coe takes us inside their lab for a closer look at this cutting-edge approach. Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland is one of the most prestigious universities in the world, an institution famed for its scientific research. Across its sprawling campus and inside its labs, the best and brightest try to shed light on the world around us and how scientifically it all works. This is a microscope. It's called a light sheet microscope. And it's Neuroscience professor Dr. Dwight Burgles uh, like is one of them. I came into this field at a very early stage when there weren't many neuroscientists, so to speak. That was 30 years ago. Back then, to study neurobiology, Burgles and other scientists had to turn to life underwater. For example, some people may have heard about squid. Squid have one of the largest um, nerve cells in the the animal kingdom, and that made it something large enough that you could record from and monitor the activity of it. I grew up in Iowa. Maybe because I was landlocked, I was fascinated with marine organisms and marine biology. And so I dreamed about becoming a marine biologist like Jacques Cousteau. Burgles never became a star of the seas, but his scientific life on land has made him a pioneer in his own right. Now he's turning to mice and a mighty tool to delve into the wonder that is the brain. Many of the same structures that we see in the mouse nervous system are found in the human nervous system. Burgles and his team are focusing on the intricate and complex communication network inside the brains of mice and how its expansive web of cells send messages to each other at critical junctions. Their findings could help them better understand the nerve circuits within the human brain as well. Millions of nerve cells exist in an average mouse brain, and not all are alike. If you only had a way of listening to the percussion instruments or something like that, you wouldn't be able to, you know, experience the richness of a symphony. And, and so this is really what we're trying to do in neuroscience. Because there are many different specialized cell types, just like there are in an orchestra, it's like we need, unfortunately, we can't just use a speaker to pick up all of their activity. We need to have a very specialized tool that allow us to pick up the violins and the cello and things like that. Just like in an orchestra, the cells in a normal, healthy brain work in harmony. About half are nerve cells that generate electrical signals to rapidly relay messages to each other. The other half are glial cells, considered the glue of the nervous system. They have a different job, to insulate and protect the nerve cells and help facilitate signal transmission. Much about them is a mystery people would use like metal or glass electrodes and they would insert them into the brain and you could listen in on the electrical activity of the, the nerve cells. But if you do that and you ask, you know, what are these other cell types doing? Total silence because they don't communicate the same way. So what can't be heard is seen thanks to artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's a cool cell. That's a really cool cell. <laughs> Graduate researcher Tiger Shi is on so, Burgle's yeah. team. They're relying on machine learning, training an AI program to help bring this vast constellation of mice brain cells literally to light. Each individual bright spot is a cell, and then you can see here, so this is all white matter. So this is where it's most dense. This large area here is the hippocampus, right? So for very important for like spatial navigation, memory formation. You can literally see it connecting the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, so this installation is incredibly important for regulating the timing of signaling. It actually enables us to, you know, have this rapid transmission between left and right hemispheres and actually uh, communicate between areas across cortices. 
A gene similar to one naturally found in jellyfish is inserted into the mice to literally light up the cells. The mice are exposed to various stimuli, new toys or a running wheel, for example, to see how these cells change and interact with each other. The AI program helps illuminate these changes via these super high resolution images, down to the microscopic level, what would be impossible before. We can see those individual green fluorescent cells in the brain of the animal, and we can watch those cells move, change, communicate with each other over time spans of seconds to months, pretty much throughout the lifespan of this animal. Processing these massive data sets, easily filling up several hard drives, is another important job delegated to the AI technology. The program is able to pinpoint the cells in question from all the other brain clutter, much like facial recognition. Each brain having over 10 million cells, it would take you years of analysis potentially to actually count all these. And then, you know, we're scaling this up to over 50, 60, 70, 80 brains. Properly analyzing the data is pivotal to help shed light about disorders in human brains like multiple sclerosis, a disease in which the immune system attacks the very protective cells that Burgles and his team are studying. It's, it's a new mode of eavesdropping on these cells, which was not available before. It's scattered all through the tissue and then comes out. Then but like any technology, the AI program isn't foolproof. Have you seen flaws in the system with this particular project? It happens every day. It happens with every experiment. One shouldn't blindly go forward and embrace something without having a means to validate and make sure that what it's revealing to you is actually real. That means AI will still need to be coupled with other classic tools like advanced microscopes. We can stitch all these pictures together to create, you know, like a three-dimensional image of uh, the features in the brain that we're interested in. But no doubt AI has and will be a key player in Burgle's lab, opening up boundless opportunities for discovery. These are sort of like, you know, put your seatbelt on kind of, you know, discussions of like where this all might be going. It is so staggeringly powerful in what it can do. It's very clear that science, in order to advance, has to make use of these approaches.